Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing well. I know, I know that the title of the video is a bit traumatic, but I kind of think that we got a little bit screwed over here, because as you probably already know, offensive security all of a sudden decided to change the entire exam structure for the OSCP. And um, do I like the changes? Yes, I actually love the changes, I think the changes are great. But on the other hand, do I think that they should have given us more time to get prepared for these changes? Yes, I absolutely do. Um, but again, it is what it is, we just have to deal with it. So, in this video, I want to share with you what was my study plan before these changes were announced and why that plan won't necessarily work for this new exam structure. So, let's start with one thing that I think is very important, which is learning from other people's mistakes. And here I'm specifically talking about studying smart and not necessarily hard. When you sign for the OSCP, you receive their course materials from Offensive Security and that consists of the huge PDF with around 900 pages or something like that. Uh, they also give you the videos which explain the same topics that you can study from the PDF and they also give you access to their labs, which is like a simulation of a real life company's network infrastructure with around 70 machines for you to fully compromise and exploit. Now that's already a lot for you to cover. Now, if you start reading some blog posts or, so, or watching some of those YouTube study guides, um, some of them will advise you to do like 150 machines more from all of those platforms, like you name it, Hack the Box, Try Hack Me, Vulnhub, Proving Grounds, and that's, that's great, in my opinion, that's great. If you have the time and the will to do it, by all means, go for it. But uh, for me personally, I gave myself three months to, to do this certification. I didn't want to invest like one or two years of my life uh, trying to get this certification. So because of that, I had to force myself to, to come up with a study plan, with a strategy um, to do this preparation in the most efficient way possible. And that involves you choosing the best study resources for you, considering the way you learn the best. So let me show you how I did it. Finding the best study resources is very important and I invest a lot of time doing that for every certification I do. And that will vary a lot because many people prefer to read books, other people prefer to watch video courses and I like to mix them both with a lot of practical resources as well. Now again, after some research on Reddit, YouTube and some blog posts, I realized that a lot of people were saying that the offensive security uh, course materials wouldn't be enough for me to get prepared for the exam. So I searched for a lot of reviews on all the other resources people were mentioning and I went for the ones I thought would help me get prepared in the most efficient way. So let me show you on the screen. Okay, so for theory I chose the offensive security course materials because I like to think that they would develop the best um, content for their own exam. And then I chose the Cyber Mentors Buffer Overflow series as well as the Privilege Escalation courses, both for Linux and Windows. Now, when it comes to practice, I chose the TJ Knowles Hack the Box list, as well as the Offensive Security Proving Grounds list. Um, and then I also decided to do the Buffer Overflow Room from Try Hack Me. Now, the reason why I didn't go all in into the OSCP labs was because they had Active Directory, they had Pivoting, and they had a lot of nuances that I knew that I wouldn't be facing on the real exam. And the same goes for the course chapters that talked about those topics. And yeah, I know that it's really important for me to get experience and to learn about those topics, especially when you're considering um, real life assessments, but here my focus was just the exam. And that ended up being a terrible strategy, uh, considering that offensive security just added all of those topics to the exam starting on January 11th. So it is what it is. Before those changes, I really thought that this would be a good strategy for me to get prepared. So now, what's next for me? Basically, I'll have to go back to the drawing board and just redesign my plan because things just got a lot more interesting regarding the exam structure and point distribution. So yeah, it is what it is once again. I hope you really enjoyed this video. 
Um, if you have any tips or suggestions in ways that I could apply to my study plan to get prepared for this exam, please let me know in the comment section below. Also, don't forget to subscribe. Um, it's free and you can always change your mind. Plus, it would be great if I could reach the goal of 1000 subscribers before the end of the year. That would be an awesome Christmas gift. And yeah, take care and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!